Today we're going to create the pegboard and mallet. And when we're done, the pegboard pieces should move up and down like that. And the mallet should move, but the pegboard itself shouldn't move. If you click on it and try to move it, it's not going to move. So that's what it's going to look like. So let's get started. So I'm going to click on on shape, create document, and call it pegboard. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is check the units. Clicking up here, these little three lines is the document menu. We'll click there, go down to workspace units, click, and change this to inches. Uh, the rest of those are okay. And we will click on the green check mark to accept all the settings we've entered. We're ready to start. Uh, we're going to create a round peg first. So we're going to click on the top plane and go sketch. Now I want to turn that to face me. So I usually press the N key, which turns the sketch to face the view you're working on. If you right click on it, you can look at it, it says um, view normal two. That's what the ends for normal. So it just means want that to face me perfectly so I can draw easily. So I'm going to use my circle tool and start at the origin, click, move my mouse out a little bit, and I can I could try to get exactly one inch, but really what's easier, just, just drag out, click somewhere. When I do that, this text box opens up and it's ready for input. So all I have to do is just, I don't have to erase it, I don't have to click on it, I don't have to backspace, just press 1 on my keyboard and press enter and that automatically dimensions that circle to a 1 inch diameter. Now I'm going to click on my dimension tool and move this dimension up up and over like that. Now to zoom in I use my scroll wheel. Okay, Quick review here. Uh, I can right click to turn this around anywhere I want. Um, if I get crazy like I don't know where I am or I zoom let's say I zoom in I, I zoom in way over here or something and I don't have any idea where I am I can always go to my this little box here go to isometric it brings it right back for me I can also use the view cube right click on that and turn that around that way um, or I can press on my scroll wheel and move move the whole I can pan move this whole thing around Okay, so I'm going to go back to here and zoom in a little bit and I'm going to extrude this. So I'm going to extrude this three inches. So right here I just go to here and press once, type three, enter. Zoom out a little bit, check that out. Looks fine. Click the green check mark to accept that. And the directions say to color this red, so I'm going to right click on the object, go down to Edit Appearance, and click on red. Click the green check mark to accept the settings I've chosen. You can mess with that if you want, but there. And let's give this a name because we're going to be creating several different parts. So right here it says Part Studio. All these are parts. We're going to play with the assembly a little bit later, but right now here's my parts. I'm going to right click on that and go to Rename. And we'll just call this Red Peg. Okay, and Enter. Okay, done with that part. And I'm going to create a orange square peg. So I'm going to click on the plus right over here. Click plus and create a part studio. Okay, here's my new part studio. Let's go ahead and name this one right now while I'm thinking about it. Let's right click on there, go to rename, and this is going to be a square peg. Okay, enter. Okay, now the square peg is going to be a one by one inch square and it's going to be extruded three inches long. So I'm going to click on Sketch, 
click on the top plane, and I'm going to press N to turn that towards me. Get my rectangle tool. Start at the origin. Click once. Drag out. Click. And this text box opens up for me. So press 1, Enter, 1, Enter. Perfect. Now, I kind of like to right-click and turn this view a little bit this way when I extrude. So when I click Extrude, uh, the default is 1. So I'm just going to click once here, press 3, and Enter. And I like to, the reason I, I right-click so I can turn that a little bit is I like to see where I'm going because sometimes you want to extrude this way. Uh, sometimes you just want to double check. You know, what if I accidentally pressed 30, you know, instead of, if I pressed 30 instead, I went, whoa, wait a second. You know, I, I can just kind of see what's happening in this view. So I press 3. Uh, if I press tab right here, it'll show me what's going on. And once I'm fine with that, I can press the green check mark to accept that. And the direction said to make this orange. So I'm going to right click. Edit appearance, click on orange, green check mark, done. Okay, now we're going to create the pegboard. So once again, go here, new part or new create, create new part studio. Okay, I'm going to right click on here, rename pegboard, enter. Again, new sketch. Click sketch. It always asks you which plane do you want to sketch on. So I want to sketch on the top plane. Okay, and I'm pressing N, turns it towards me. Now I'm going to scooch this over a little bit because I'm going to start at the origin and then I'm going to make my pegboard out this way. So I'm just going to scooch that over a little bit. I'm going to start with a rectangle and kind of click and drag this out. And this is going to be. 5.75 enter and 3 enter. That's the basic size of my pegboard. Okay. We're going to create a hole, a round hole here, and a square hole over here. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of click somewhere over here. I'm not going to go right for the center. Now, you can, if I hover over this line, and I move up and down it, you'll see when I get to the center, see that little box that showed up? That shows me I'm right on the midline of there. So if I wanted to make something right on the midline, that's kind of cool. But it puts in an automatic constraint. You see the little lines below my cursor there? It puts in some constraints that I don't necessarily always want. So for now, I'm going to kind of not go in the center line. I'm just going to click and drag a little bit and press 1 for 1 inch diameter. 1, Enter. Okay, now I want I do want that to be uh, on the center there, but I want to dimension it to make sure because I'm going to be moving it around later. So I like it to have my constraint and not just the one the computer picks. So I want this center of this to be 1 and a half inches from here. So I click here, click here, and drag this over and click. I want that to be 1.5, enter. Okay, now I'm going to clean this up just a teeny bit. I'm just going to move this over, move this here. Now this is the dimension for my circle and I like to have my circles and arcs dimension at 45 degree angles like that so you can tell it's a circle or an arc. And now I also need to make this circle uh, the center of the circle one and three quarter inches from this line. So I'm going to click, so I'm going to click the center and this line and go up and I want that to be 1.75 enter. Okay, now my circle's in the right place. Uh, move that a little bit too. Now I want a square over here that's a one by one, so I'm going to click on my rectangle tool. Again, I'm not going to go right exactly in the middle. I'm just going to click up here, click my square. One, enter, one, enter. Okay. Now to put this in the right place, I want this line to be one and a quarter inches from here. So make sure I have my dimension tool. Click here, click here, and go up. 
and that's uh, 1.25 enter. And I also want this line to be one inch from this line. So if I just go click here, click here, and over here, click, and one enter. Okay, so that's my basic shape. And this drawing right here, this drawing of dimensions is on the worksheet. Page two of the worksheet. Okay, so that's it for that. And I need to, well, that's not quite it because it's flat, isn't it? I need to extrude that. So we'll click extrude up here. We will extrude that three quarters of an inch. So we'll click over here, 0.75, enter. And that is what it should look like. Okay, so I, that's perfect. So I'll click the green check mark here to accept those settings. And we want this to be yellow. So I'm going to click, right click. Sorry, right click, go to edit appearance, and pick yellow. Is there a nice yellow in there? Sure, gold, I guess, whatever, that's fine. Okay. So now we have a red peg, a square peg, and the pegboard. So let's join these together. So we're going to click down here in the assembly. So click on assembly. And we want to insert things into our assembly. So I'm going to click over here on insert. And here it shows me everything I've made so far. So if I click here, click, and then I can move it kind of wherever I want. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. You know where I click? And now it sets it there. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to fix this pegboard in place so it doesn't move around in relationship to everything else. I need at least one thing to be fixed, otherwise pieces slide all over the place and it can get a little crazy. So all I have to do to fix this is right click on the object and go to fix. That's it. Okay, now I'm going to click once, move over here, and click. I'm going to click on the square peg, click, drag, and you notice it brings them in yellow and I, I thought, wait a minute, it's not supposed to be that color, but as soon as you click and let go, it shows the real color. The, the yellow color just shows that that's what's selected. Okay, so I'm good for now. So I'm going to click the green check mark to accept those settings. And now I have these. Now, let's say for some reason you brought these in and there's some different orientation. If you click on these, you get these neat little handles. So I can turn this, which obviously doesn't do much because it's, um, it's round. Um, or I can, you know, each of these has its own axis of rotation, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, I brought them in the right way already, so I really don't have to, to change them. So they're all set. So as long as this object is, is you know, kind of close to where I want to mate it, I'm good to go. Now up here, you see we have these different mating options. Okay, if we want something to hold tight, we're going to use this one. If we want something to be able to uh, rotate, we're not going to be using this one today. This one's going to slide up and down, which is nice, and, and for a round object. This one lets it slide up and down for the plane, so we're going to use those. So right now I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to click in the center of here, and I'm going to go over here and click in the center of here, and that puts it right in the right place. And I can click the green check mark to solve it. And over here, uh, this is waiting for my next one. See, now it's, it's thinking, okay, I did that one. Now it's wanting me to do another one. I don't want to do another one, so I'm going to close this. So I just did that one. Now I'm going to click on it and try to drag it this way. And it shouldn't go. It should only go up and down. So that's done. That's that easy. Now for this one, this is a little trickier because it's not a circle. So I'm going to try to mate this plane, this front plane here, with this inside plane here. And I'm going to have to turn this this way to this plane right in here. So this surface is going to be mated with this surface, but I want it to be able to slide. So this is the slider plane surface or planar mate. So I'm going to click on there. I'm going to click in the center here. I'm going to turn this, and I might have to kind of zoom in a little bit to get this little there. See how that little circle is right now in the middle of that plane? Perfect. Click. 
Okay, zoom out. I'm gonna. That looks right. So I'm gonna go ahead and ch check this. Click, and that's good. Now again, this is saying, okay, do you want to do some more? And I say, no, no more. Good. Um, actually, I lied. <laughs> okay, so I just selected this one and this one. Now it can still move. So now I have to select this plane and this plane here. So I have to do another another mate. This is a separate another mate. So I'll click here and I'm going to rotate it to get this one. And I'm going to rotate here. And again, I have to I got to kind of zoom in to there, get that, click, and solve that. Okay, now, it still wants me to do another one. I say, nope, got it. So now this should, if I click on it, it shouldn't move any direction except up and down, and it did. Okay, so we're done with that part.